I'm Betty Davis. I'm a home missionary. I have served him for almost 50 years. And today we're going to be talking about the names of Christ, deity, and also the attributes. And we are going to be learning that Christ is speaking to us in the last days in the book of Revelation. And he has us ready to meet him in the clouds. And that's what we're looking forward to, the rapture. And this is the most important thing that can happen to any person, is to receive this gift that God has given to us. This gift is one of his first gifts, for this is every person in the world. He died for the sins of the whole world. And this is the gift that he has. And then his gifts become riches and all of his wealth is our inheritance. And this is the first thing that you must learn. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is all free from the beginning. This is faith, the very beginning. Faith is just believing what God says he will do. He will never fail us. His promises are true. Remember, his promises are exceeding great and precious promises. Those are all ours. If we receive him, his children, we become. Faith is just believing. Now, this wonderful thing is done. This is what faith is all about. And you must live by faith. There is no other way to please God. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And we're going to give you the Bible verses, and we want you to write these down and learn them and teach them to our children. We are commanded to do this. So this is John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And one of the things I want to teach you today is how to pray for each other. This is a gift from God as priest of God and saints of God and a king of God, all of us. This is our gift, praying. He is praying night and day for every believer. And the greatest need that we have today is for you to pray this prayer. I'm going to show you where this is, but first I'm going to kneel and pray. And I want every true believer, because he says in Leviticus, we're going to find this out, that if 100 will pray, he will chase 10,000 enemies. That is the reason I'm teaching you to pray these prayers that he has given to us as believers. And I pray that you will write these down and do the same thing because in the last days, we need to reach people for Christ. And we're all faithful servants for him. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee that we can come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. And our world is in the greatest need of believers obeying the Word of God. And this is just one of the prayers that He has taught me to pray. And I want every person that is listening to write these down and pray this prayer daily. And we will multiply 100 and we will see great things as we do his will. 
So as we come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need, we want to lift our deity up and worship him in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of thy holiness. And as we come before the throne of grace, he has given to us his heavenly divine riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. This is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come into the unity of the faith, unto the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man. And this is our prayer for the whole body of believers, and this is our prayer for those that are lost. He came to seek and to save those that are lost. And we're giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of his divine inheritance as saints of light. For in Christ he loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. That is for every person that has not received this gift. And we're asking for 100 fold today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as we come to these lessons, we'll find out that this prayer is in the book of Ephesians. And I want you to write these down and memorize this prayer and pray it every day. I don't know how many years I have been praying this, but it has been the greatest blessing for me to know that he answers prayer by faith. And I have lived by faith, and worry causes 38 diseases. And if you're worried, you cannot get the blessings from praying. You have to believe he will do it. So the, I, this prayer that I gave you today is in Ephesians chapter 3, beginning in verse 16. And then I stopped at it at the, I didn't give you that we can have all the fullness of God, that is, you can pray down to chapter t verse 21. And then the other part of that was in Ephesians 4, verse 12 and 13. And you have to have this because this is the most important thing. And now as we come to these lessons, true faith is a gift from God, just like I read, the, and I give this Bible verse for you to remember. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And then John 3.16. Everyone knows John 3.16. And now by in John 17.3, we are learning all that we know about him. He says in John 17.3, this is life eternal, that we may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. This is how we know that we have eternal life. Only things in heaven are eternal. Only things in heaven are holy, not on this earth. So these are eternal things that he is giving to us, and that's why we must learn them. And his name, and I'm not going to be able to get into all of the things on the names of Christ, but this is, as a child of God, in his deity, he is acquainted with all eternal purposes. So we see in Galatians how we, what we have in him, the greatest gift in the world is what he has given us as children of God. And this is in Galatians chapter 3. Now, as a child of God, these are what we have. He says, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Now this is Galatians chapter 3 beginning in 20 verse 26 verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ put on Christ. 
There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for we are all one in Christ. And then in verse 29, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So we are seeing in Colossians, it's just a, this, most of these are in Colossians and Ephesians because they give us the Lord Jesus Christ and everything we need to know. So he says in Colossians, now I read this to you once before, I gave it in my prayer, Colossians 1.12, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of his divine inheritance as saints of light. And then in verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. And then he says, in this is deity that we are learning about. Only deity is to be worshiped. That is the first thing we're going to learn today. And then he says, who this is, Colossians 1, verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Now remember, he is a supreme being. He has always been. And we'll learn that also. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now this is deity. And he is the head of the body, and we are, we are the body, and he's the head. This is, that's how close we are as believers. And we have to have unity, because where there is division, Christ isn't there. Verse 18 of Colossians 1, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Now we go back to Romans chapter 8. We have to understand what we are in him and how rich we are and every word is ours. He lives this through us as you learn them. So in Romans, this is amazing. Romans is another one of the books that you should read all the time. Romans 8, there's so much in here that you need to read it often every day. And this is Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And this is verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And then verse 17, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. And see, here's what the Spirit of God is. And you need to know these, these truths. God the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, three and one, one and three. We only have a soul and a spirit until we are born again. Then the Spirit of God comes to dwell in our bodies and He teaches us all things. You cannot learn this book until you have the Spirit of God dwelling in you. So here's what you do. Here's what it tells us in John chapter, everybody must turn to John and read John. The book of John has in it all the things we need as a child of God. And this is John chapter four, verse 23. Now listen at this. You can't pray what we want. V wisdom of this world is vanity and vexation of spirit. So he says in verse 23, But the hour cometh, and now is, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him 
in spirit and in truth. So here's what we have. As a child of God, greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see, as a child of God, we, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And his, our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. So this means that I have to be obedient to the word of God and live it and read it and know it. Nothing else matters in life because he says in these names, I, he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's the ancient of days. He's always been. So while I'm here in John, I have to give this to you so you can understand that he was before creation because he created everything. We just read that in Colossians 1, 15. And he says, after he was finished, he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying for us. You should read that and see what all we have in him. He says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Now, he is the Son of God. He had to become man to die. God can't die. The Spirit of God can't die. Your soul never dies. Your soul goes to a place of torment, and your body goes back to dust. So he says, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O oh, Father, glorify thou with thy, me with thine own self, which I had with thee before the world was. And he created the earth and the heavens, and they are all his. He's heir of all heaven. He's heir of all the earth. And this is why he is called the highest, because he's El El Yon. We'll learn more about that later, because he has authority over all heaven. He has authority over all the earth, and he is the source of all life. If deity didn't exist, everything else would be gone, because he has authority over everything. That is why he knows the number of the stars and calls them all by name. So this is why we have to get in this book and learn about him. So he says in these lessons, there's three primary names that we're going to get, give right now. Elohim, E-L, means strength, and strong one. That is our deity. Jehovah, Jehovah is God Almighty. These are all about him and how great he is. And then Adoniah, Lord, and Lord means master. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I command thee to do? And then it also says in Psalm 83, 18, he's the most high over all the earth. E-L and L, L yam He is most high God. And David said in Psalm 57, 2, I cried unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. Now let's think about what Christ went through for us. Just think when he went to the cross. This is the very beginning of every person that has never heard how he was beaten, and how he was put on the cross. They spit in his face. They slapped him. They had a thong like this, and this thong had 12 pieces of leather and bone and metal. They beat him on the cross with this 39 stripes. That's how he suffered for us. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And then, let's think of what he did. The nail that was put in his hands and his feet. And how could you not receive the gift of eternal life? 
You see, our lives are so rich in Him. Through Christ are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. When you learn these, all these truths about Him, your life changes because He lives this through us. Everything that He is doing is for us. And we have, He's our great high priest right now. And He's praying night and day for every believer. By His own blood, He entered in once into the holy place. In Christ, we have redemption through His blood. Once you know how He suffered for us, and His love never changes. And there is another way that you can go, and that's your decision. Christ did not make hell for people. He made hell for the devil and his angels. And I just want to read just one Bible verse right now that you will understand how terrible hell is. It is a blackness of darkness forever, and it is also it is also fire and brimstone. And now this is the greatest, the darkest chapter, the greatest suffering that you will ever go through if you don't receive Christ as Savior. And He has heaven prepared for us. The street is pure gold and the city is pure gold. He says, Isaiah 34, this is, every person should read this, and you would get on your knees right now and accept Christ. He says in verse, this is what hell is like, and it's right here in verse 9. This is Isaiah chapter 34, verse 9. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone fire and brimstone, and the blackness of darkness forever, and you will never come out of this place. This is eternal. And that is why I'm here for you. And listen at this, and the land thereof, thereof shall become burning pitch. You see why I'm here today? I don't know if you've heard me before, but this is my life. I have prayed all these years that he would go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That he says, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. And he says, he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. When I prayed that prayer, that was for the saints that they can do the same thing that God has done for me. And the hardest thing for me is the children. And he says, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. All of my missionary stories are on YouTube. My good news program is on YouTube. That's the reason I'm here for you. I don't do this for money. Christ didn't ask for money, and neither are we. I'm here because I love you, and God loves you. And God's love is so greater than my love. I have lived this, and He has given me an abundant life. I have more friends that love me, and I counsel with them. And this is the great, greatest burden for me to know that we are going to find out next week what Christ says to us in the book of Revelation, wanting us to come into his presence. That is the last verse in the Bible. It is so amazing what he has, and it is for everybody that has never received the gift of eternal life. And the things that he says, he which testifieth these things, this is Revelation 22, verse 20, surely I come quickly, Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. This is soon. Our nations are so evil. We have the most evil things that are happening. And Christ is left out. 
and his word is left out. And he says in verse 21, this is the last promise. Verse 20 was the last prayer. This is he which testifieth these things. Surely I come quickly. It could be today, and then it'd be too late. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Verse 21, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And then he says this one. I want to give them to you in the next program. He says in verse 12, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. If you just pray for me, you'll be rewarded when you get to heaven. And this is why I'm here, and I want to see all of you in heaven. And I thank God for the opportunity to give out this message. And I thank God for Justin. And I thank God for each of you that are going to receive the gift of eternal life because I pray for 100-fold. And God gives me that promise. And I thank God for this today.